Stay tuned. This is Best in Business with Manny Lopez on Radio Latino Inc. Best in Business, we are back with Caleb Maddox, uh, this amazing 15 year old entrepreneur. The kid has wrote six books already, he's already made over six figures, and he is here at Best in Business live and Radio Latino Inc. Welcome to our show, Caleb. Well, I'm glad to be here, and I want to say first off, you guys are doing an awesome job, like, you know, me just being able to sit here kind of in the background while I was waiting to go on. Like, I love how this put together, like, your relationship with your son. I think it's amazing, so I'm definitely glad to be here for sure. Thank you. And we also have got Matt Maddox in the house as well, the father of this amazing entrepreneur, so we really got, like, a little double team yeah, thing going on. Yeah, seeing you guys just reminds of, of us, man. Yeah. It was so awesome hearing your guys' story. I was like, dude, I got inspired, so it was <laughs> awesome to hear. Awesome stuff. All right, so we want to get right into it. We've got a lot of questions. We've got live streams going on all over the place here. This is going to be fun stuff. So uh, first question I have for Caleb. What made you write your first book? What made me write my first book? Well, I want to start off, first of all, with kind of the foundation of my success. And you know, I did a video on this, and it has like you know almost 14 million views. Basically, the thing that changed it all for me is I was over at one of my friend's house one day, and uh, my friend's mom walked up to him while we were sitting on the couch and handed him a $20 bill. And I was like, you know, I've always been pretty money motivated. So I was like, you know, what, you know, why is he getting this $20 bill? What did he do? Yeah. And I asked his mom, I was like, you know, what did he do to get this $20? And she said that he did these things called chores. And I was like, hmm, that sounds pretty interesting. What's that? And he was, and she said that anytime he takes out the trash or, you know, he cleans the dishes, he does all the chore type of stuff. At the end of the month, if he does it, he gets paid $20. And I was like, man, my dad's ripping me off. I'm already doing this, right? Like, come on. Like, I got to start getting paid for it. So I went home, and as soon as I went home, I said, Dad, you know, I want to get paid to do my chores. Like, I'm taking out the trash as it is. I want to start making money for it. And he said something that really has impacted me to this day, and I wouldn't be where I am if he didn't. He said the word no. He said, no, I'm not going to pay you to do chores. I remember thinking, like, why? Don't you want me to learn to take out the trash and do this and do this? Like, don't you want me to learn to work around the house? He said, yeah, but I expect you to do that stuff. Like, when you're older, you're not going to get paid to do chores, so why would I pay you to do it now? He said, but there is something that you will get paid for. And he said, that's the knowledge that you learn in success books. And I was like, okay, so what are you saying? He's like, okay, you're going to do your chores, but instead I'll pay you $20 every single success book that you read and write a report on. And I was like, okay, deal, I'm gonna do it. So I started reading these success books. I was seven years old at the time. I read my first book, Success Principles by Jack Canfield. You know, it's a really thick book. Then I read Think and Grow Rich and all these different books. And I remember like the impact it had on me. It started teaching me about take responsibility and making a difference. And next thing you know, I started sharing this with other kids in my class and they started, you know, it, it started changing their life. They started, you know, implementing some of this stuff. And I started realizing, man, like, I need to take this to more people. I need to take this tool to more people. So I started doing stuff like creating businesses and posting on social media. Like, you know, I was just over at a friend's house yesterday. Uh, they have, you know, they're really big YouTubers. And we spent like a, a good 20 minutes watching some of my old videos. They're like super funny. You know, I was just like, I was really trying to get my message out there. And I remember about 12 years old, I was sitting there like, what's the number one thing I can do to get my message out? And I realized that if you look at everyone, like you look at most of the biggest you know, speakers and most of the biz biggest business people, what do they all have in common? They've all written books. So I started writing out, I'm going to write a book. I'm going to write a book. And one day I wondered, why am I saying I'm going to write a book when I can just do it now? You know, and that's where my, my slogan came in. The gun that kills the most people is the gonna. Like, stop saying you're going to do this and you're going to do that. Take action today. And if you keep saying you're going to, you're never going to actually do it. And that's going to kill your dreams with that gun. So I sat down and I said, Dad, I want to write my book today. I'm just going to make it happen. He said, go for it. Next thing you know, I wrote my book, Keys to Success for Kids. It got in the hands of thousands of other kids. You know, I started getting, getting to hang out with celebrities. I went to national television in front of 8 million people. And all these opportunities happened because of really two things. The first step was my dad, instead of paying me to do chores, he paid me to read books. And that taught me the power of education. And then the second thing was I stopped saying I'm gonna, and I actually took action. And that's really how I've gotten to where I am today, and that's the long answer of how I wrote my first book, Keys to Success for Kids, and now I'm the author of six books. Nice. So you were 12 years old when you wrote your first book? 12 years old when I wrote it, 13 when it actually got like published. Nice. Ooh. And it was called Keys to Success for Kids? That's right. Yeah. Wow. All right, so if you guys are listening to this, and you have kids, which is a lot of people listening, 
definitely go get that book, Keys to Success for Kids. Obviously, he's doing something right. You know, the kid's been on <laughs> national media. He's got millions and millions of eyeballs on what he does. And he's doing it all because of very simple concepts, right? And, and the thing that goes back to parenting, just our last segment, where we're talking about is strong parenting and the, and the impact that that has for our children. So, Matt, I want to bring you in. What made what got you that concept to not? I mean, I've always grown up paying kids for chores, and you know, as recent as just maybe even a couple of weeks ago. Um, but when I saw that presentation that Caleb got that did and had shared that concept, it just little it was a light bulb that just turned on. It was just like, duh, why what why didn't I think of this a long time ago? So, what what got you to start in that concept? Well, I had a very clear vision of what I wanted him to become you know it started with that and I knew that he had to get addicted to personal growth he had to become consumed with it mm -hmm. and I've always been big into training not just like feeding your kids sending them to school but actually training them you know to to have the right mindset and so I knew the power of reading in my own life and I knew that you literally are gonna become who you associate with and what you read so because I knew that and I also wanted to train him subconsciously because those that earn the most, uh, those that earn the most learn the most. And so I knew that if he had to, if he was going to be successful, he had to learn how to read. And I wanted, he's going to, one day you're going to get paid for what you read anyways. So I wanted him to learn it at a young age. And so I can pay you to pay. I don't want to pay you to take out the trash, but if you read this success book or you watch these motivational videos, I had him watch all the Tony Robbins videos as we were talking about earlier. Brian Tracy, Jack Canfield, you name it. I just wanted to feed his mind the right stuff. Yeah. And that, that one of the things that you just said right now, you get paid for what you read. Mm -hmm. I think that's a very, very powerful concept. Most people don't understand that because they think they just get paid for what they know. But, you know, I mean, what they know is what you read, right? If mm -hmm. you're not ingesting content that's making you smarter, then you're not really growing at all. Yeah. Um, it's a funny thing because I always tell whenever I'm doing a presentation, I'm speaking and stuff like that. I'm always telling people become a sponge for knowledge. Mm. You know, you have to learn every, something new every day so you can literally create those new concepts, create those new ideas and bring value to the marketplace. Yeah. Caleb, what would you say is the biggest challenge you've had to overcome? I mean, you're 15 years old. My, my many challenges you've had, but I, I guarantee there's a lot of things that you've done that most yeah. people still haven't done. Give me an idea of some of the challenges you've had to face. You know, there's a lot of challenges that I've had to deal with, you know, as far as, you know, family members and other stuff, like in that type of areas. And that's kind of been the number one. But I mean, everyone thinks that, you know, I kind of grew up and my dad and I, we just like, it was like always perfect and we always had money. But we did like, we went through a lot of struggle. You know, I can remember maybe even as, you know, as early as like maybe three years ago, we literally had $7 in our bank account and we were just trying to make it, you know, like those type of struggles. I mean, I remember, you know, we used to live in a Sunday school room, like in the very beginning, because like we, we didn't have a place to stay. So we just like had to live there. So like everyone thinks it's been super easy, but there has been a lot of challenges. There has been a lot of things that we've gone through along the way. But I'll say the number one, honestly, uh, it's people who are really close to me who kind of, I would say, uh, haven't been supportive or have turned on me or, you know, I've, ha I've had different experiences with people and those have been difficult to handle in the past. Yeah. And I'll chime in one thing, just watching his development, probably the biggest obstacle he had to personally overcome was that he used to be extremely shy. I'm talking like probably one of the most shy, insecure kids that I've ever been around. And that really? kind of yeah. goes back to why I instilled yeah. personal development in him because I knew he could change. I knew that he could become positive and powerful and confident, but he was extremely insecure and shy. Uh, and you know, what a transformation <laughs> where he's at I now. I never guess. I know shy. people are Everyone shocked says that, yeah. when they hear that. I used to, I've been speaking for 20 years and I had always started having him speak when he was like seven years old. He used to literally cry. My begging first, me my first speech i told my dad i was like dad i want to get my message out i want to do a speech mm -hmm. and he was like okay and then like i thought about it like 30 minutes later i was like wait a second that means there's gonna be people in a room like looking at me and i gotta talk i was like dad i don't want to do it he said nope you made the command we're gonna do it so i gave my first speech and i remember like i was i was super nervous but my dad pushed me out of my comfort zone and as soon as i got done with the speech uh, looking back on it, i did pretty well for being you know however young i was but i remember i literally cried 
like as soon as I was done and went and hid, hid underneath a piano. Oh, wow. And like, I know that sounds like insane, like, you know, especially with where I am now, but I think that's one key that a lot of people don't realize is my dad, he's the most supportive person. Like he is, you know, he can definitely tell when I'm pushing too hard. He encourages me. He has to stop me from working too hard, you know? But also, he doesn't let me get it easy. And a lot of parents, they let their kids live in their comfort zone and it just doesn't make any sense to me. Like, you know, they let them say, oh, nine to five, you know, like that's like, that's their comfort zone. Or like, you know, you don't have to, you know, you just need to just be a kid. When people say you need to just be a kid, I'm like, well, then why do you send them to school for six hours? Well, I'm trying to set them up for their future. So then why aren't you trying to teach them business at the same time, you know? So I definitely think that's a big thing is my dad used to push me out of my comfort zone even when I didn't want it to happen. Nice. So, and first, if I could give a quick shout out, anytime my dad's in the room, I have to say, he's the greatest dad in the, in the world. I'm super glad to have my life, so fist bump on that. <laughs> well, we're gonna have some competition. I know, I, know. I was like, just thinking that. your I son, like, Isaac. I was like, Isaac. No, but I love that though, it's so true. And every kid should think their, their dad's the best dad in the world though. Definitely. I mean, it's a, it's a concept that us men should definitely instill in our, in our children that we can be the resource of support, of, of value, and show them a, a step-by-step guide to life. You know, I mean, it's something that we're constantly learning ourselves as, as dads, and, but it's something that we should be learning while teaching at the same time. There's mm. too many, I, I see it all the time, where I, I, I do a lot of networking, go to a lot of events, right? And I'm, and I'm meeting you know, other dads and, and father figures out there. And a lot of them that I come across, they hardly spend time with their kids. I know. They're yeah. hardly out. They don't bring their kids to their mm-hmm. events. I mean, people look at me and are like, wow, Manny, you bring your kids to events. I'm like, why aren't, why aren't you? <laughs> you know, yeah. why are your kids sitting at home watching video games and, and or playing video games and watching cartoons when mm-hmm. they could be learning from millionaires and billionaires? You know, I literally make it a point anytime I possibly can to say, hey, can I bring my kids along? Can I bring at least one of them? I love that. Right? Uh, can I bring somebody along with me that, that I can you know, join with me on this in this experience. And uh, every chance I get, I, I make it happen. Um, you had said something very, uh, that stuck out to me when you were explaining your first speech, is mm-hmm. your dad didn't let you quit. He didn't let you cancel it, yeah. right? You had gotten cold feet. He said, no, we made the commitment, you're doing it. What went through your mind at that, point, at that time? <laughs> I was scared, nervous, like <laughs> mad a little bit. But you know, looking back on it, my dad always, I always felt comfortable with what my dad was having me do mm-hmm. because he always I knew that he always had my best interest out. So like I had that mindset. But I mean, I'm not going to lie like, you know, a lot of people think that every time my dad tells me to do something, I get excited like, "Yeah, dad, you're right. You're your best dad." But like it's not always like that, you know. I was mad. I was like, you know, I was nervous. I didn't want to do it. But then now look where I'm at. And that's the tough decision a lot of parents have to make. And understand like your kid's not always going to be happy with you, but it's it's if it's for the their best interest, then like in the long run, you know, it was worth it. So yeah, I, I'm always telling my kids when I'm telling them something they don't understand. Like I'm telling, them, hey Isaac, I need you to do this. Yeah, and he's just like, why? You know, and I'm like, trust me. In ten years, you're going to look back on all this stuff, and you'll be like, Dad, you were right. Dad, you're right. So yeah, I think it's a really strong thing that we have to keep reminding them that in the future, you're going to know this was right. Right, and I remember growing up and hearing that all the time. My dad would tell me, "Just do it because yeah. you know you'll get, you'll understand later in life." And he didn't really explain the concept too much. It's just, "You'll get it later. You'll get it later." I got it later, but during that entire time, I'm like, "What? What are you talking about? What's going on?" Right? Yeah, there's this. A lot of people are. We're so afraid that we're being too hard on our kids. I get that all the time. Aren't you afraid you're being a little too hard on your son? And I'm like, "Listen, the problem is not that we're too hard on our kids. Problems were too easy on them." I agree. And, you know, for me, I remember when Caleb started selling, because that's been one of the number one values I've tried to instill in him is you must master sales. And when he first came out with his book, you know, of course, he went viral on the Internet and sales were easy. And I was like, you know what? Going to go to the streets, going to sell your book door to door. And you're going to literally and we're going down in like downtown St. Pete where the rich people are. And you would think they're the easiest to sell, but they're actually the toughest, you know. And so. I said, what's your goal? Always start with the goal. And he's like, I'm going to sell 10 books. I said, okay. So, dude, he literally, for the first 30 minutes, it was rejection after rejection after rejection. He sold maybe like three books. Mm -hmm. And he literally had like 10 people in a row just blow them off, tell them no, walk right past him. He was only 12. He was discouraged. He was literally, was hot out. 
And he came in, he was like, you know, and I was right there with him, but he was like, Dad, he goes, it's just, it's not happening today. He goes, let's just call it a day. And he goes, you know, it's, it's the middle of summer. These people here, they don't want to buy kids books. I said, what'd you say your goal was? He said, 10. He's like, yeah, but Dad, I said, listen, no, no, no. This is your number one lesson in sales. When you set a goal, it's a lot of people, they let themselves off the hook. You know, I tell people all the time, you got to establish rewards and consequences. So some, we set a goal, like I'm going to make 15 sales calls today. Well, I dare you to sleep on the floor if you don't make those 15 sales calls. I dare you to say, okay, I didn't reach my goal, so I don't deserve to sleep. I don't deserve my bed. I don't deserve coffee. I don't deserve dinner, whatever it may be. But anyways, long story short, pushed him back out there, said, nope, you said you're going to sell 10 books. We're not stopping until you sell 10 books. And literally is one of the biggest breakthroughs in his life because changed his state, he changed his energy, he changed his attitude, and we tweaked his his pitch a little bit, and within like 20 minutes, he sold the other seven books. Nice. It's a big lesson. So not only did he make a you know $150 that day, but he also learned a valuable lesson of you don't stop short. I don't care if you're tired, I don't care if you're going through obstacles or setbacks, you set a goal, you honor that goal. Awesome. Now you said something when you were explaining that. Something in consequences. What was that again? Uh, rewards and consequences. Rewards and consequences. I really love that concept. I want to repeat that for my listeners here. Rewards and consequences. What he's explaining in that sense is you set a goal, and I've, I've never had the consequences part built in, and I'm going to literally start doing that. Set a goal, like a daily goal, whatever that is, if you're doing sales calls, if you're doing you know, emails out, or if you're going door to door, if you, whatever concept of your business or whatever in life that you're doing, rewards and consequences. It's smart. It's, you, know, you set a goal. If you hit that goal, you outline your reward. If you don't hit your goal, you give yourself a consequence that you don't want. Yeah. And, and I don't like let that. yourself off yeah. the hook. And don't let yourself, yeah, I let myself off the hook way too much. <laughs> we all I, do. I'll have to admit, I'm very bad at that. I'm always just like, ah, business another day. Let me go hang out with the kids. Let me go hang out with the wife. Let me go yeah. take a nap. <laughs> you know, uh, yeah. it's funny. People but. think we're extreme. I'll just say this real fast. Um, to this day, if Caleb and I set our goals, sales mm-hmm. goals, if we don't hit them, we literally make ourselves sleep on the floor. No pillow, no blanket. People literally. are like, that's extreme. It is, but we so few miss it now because we don't. We remember the pain of sleeping on the floor when our bed's right there. But that's where that's the difference between winners or losers. Winners hold themselves to a higher standard. Winners hold Kobe themselves Bryant. to a higher standard. Kobe, if you're listening, you set the example for us. <laughs> yeah, and there's like there's like the ancient principle back in the day, like a long time ago. I'm talking hundreds of years ago. If someone wanted to get someone to do something, they use like the kill them or kiss them method. And what that is, is it's you know if like if you want this person to you know do this thing, then you say, listen, if you don't do it, I'm gonna kill you. If you do. I'll give you a million dollars. Now, what that means is, like, you give yourself a reward if you do and a consequence if you don't. And, like, well, that's something we'll do. Like, with sales, we'll say, you know what, if we don't, we sleep on the floor. If we do, you know, we'll, uh, you know, go play tennis go to New or something, York or whatever. Or... Go to New York. Like, we'll do something like that. And I think that's an important principle, something that will keep you motivated, like a, like a small little tactic that, you know, if you don't do it, then give yourself a consequence you don't want. But if you do, also give that reward. That way there's the positive and negative effect definitely there's a there's a um you know achievement that they're going for i love it i mean it's a beautiful concept now people may be looking on the outside in you know they're they're watching you through social media watching through snapchat and instagram live and all that stuff and seeing the day-to-day of the caleb maddox world for the maddox addicts (laughs) right give me a behind the scenes breakdown of the day-to-day what do you what is the waking up what's the first thing you do Going to sleep, what's the last thing you do? What is a, a typical day in the life of, of Caleb and Matt Maddox? So we do have our morning and nighttime routine. We have it all over YouTube. Like We've done those type of things before. I can't give you the day-by-day breakdown because like every day is different. Like Some yeah. days we'll be in L.A., some days we'll be in New York. But I can tell you there's five things that we try to do every single day. And the first one's reading. Like No matter what throughout the day, we're going to get our reading in. Second one's exercising. You know, a lot of people, there's a lot of entrepreneurs who they, they take I that out of the equation. They, they take that out of the equation, I mean. And it's important. Like, you know, we always say foods affect moods. So making sure that, you know, you're healthy and, like, you feel good. That's what gives us our energy to be able to do what we do. So there's reading. There's exercising. There also is the factor of, like, juicing and getting in our healthy food. We got to make sure we get, every once in a while we'll have a cheat meal. 
Like, I love me some Buffalo Wild Wings, and we have a couple pizza places we like. In but and we, out. Yeah, in and out. I, I mean, I've you done are, good. I've only eaten in and out once, and I've been in L.A. over almost 10 days. So that's that's a miracle, that's guys. That's discipline, you don't even know. my friends. Um, so there's that. The You know, the fourth one is we try to do, like, some form of meditation or not even so much as meditation as getting away from our phone, you know, taking a break, just not even doing it. And the, and the fifth thing that we do is we make sure that we have a conversation every single day. Like, we make sure that every day, no matter what, we sit down time. and, like, we talk through. Yeah, We go in 90-minute blocks. We literally plan the entire day. We have a morning routine, very strictly, that we follow. We have a bedtime routine. Bedtime routines are very important. We actually mm-hmm. literally have a checklist that we we literally follow. But we work in 90-minute blocks, and every single day, we've committed to daily sales. It doesn't matter where we are. We have a daily sales process we follow. Follow up, sales, follow up. So there's the business side. There's what he was sharing was a lot of the personal stuff. We have a block of communication time, a block of personal growth, a block of fulfillment. So we have all these 90-minute blocks that we designate, and it's 100% focus. Nice. Yeah, that's some, that is some great content. Now, I was going to go to questions on Facebook. We had a very short amount of time here. So we're going to get to those questions in the comments. I'm going to do a behind-the-scenes video. You guys are going to be able to check it out. I want to leave the last question here to Isaac. Isaac, what do you want to ask Caleb or Matt on, uh, on anything that you've, you've heard about today? So why did you want to start this off? Why did I want to start it off? First of all, dude, you're awesome. I love man. Him, man. You're absolutely awesome. <laughs> Um, questions, huh? He is, man. Why did I want to start though? I think that's super important is the why. You know, I just met a UFC uh, fighter yesterday in the gym. Like, we ran into each other, and we've seen, you know, each other's stuff before. And I was like, what's your routine before you go into a big fight? Because he's going into, like, one of the championships for UFC actually next week. And he said, my only routine is before every match, I write down every reason why I'm doing it. So mm. that's a good question. It's all about the why. Here's what I'll say. The why for me, honestly... It's really from it's two it's two things, it, no it's actually one thing but there's two things within it. The fr- it's freedom, that's what it is for me. But the two things within it is number one, freedom for myself. Like you know my goal, I don't want to be 20 years old and be looking for a job. I want to be 20 years old and be providing jobs. You know that's that's a vision that I have. I don't want to have to worry about money. Like I want to be financially free. If I want to travel this place, you know I want to be able to do it. Like the freedom for myself is one of my big whys. But the main why is freedom for other people. You know, every day that I wake up, I say, you know, I may not feel like getting out of bed this morning, but there's a chance that if I don't and that I don't do a video today, that that person who's going to watch that video that I didn't do because I wasn't motivated is going to be like their life's going to be changed, you know? So I make sure that like, I, I feel like being unmotivated is selfish, you know, because there's people that are counting on you. There's people that are looking at you. So that's why. That's the reason I started what I'm doing. It's really just impact, you know, like. I remember back in the day when I started reading, I was like, man, other kids need to hear this. And that's why I started doing videos, and that's why I wrote my book. So it comes back to that freedom for me, freedom for myself and freedom for others. And a very simple concept, people, serving. He Mm. wants to create a life of serving, a life of giving value. That is all that we have here today for today's first ever Best in Business with Manny Lopez. We are live here in the Equitable Building here in Los Angeles on Radio Latino Inc., where passion becomes success. Thank you for joining me. Catch me here next week, 1030 Pacific Time on RadioLatinoInc.com. You guys have a great day and always remember that you are too blessed to be stressed. Mm. That's all for this week. See you next time. Catch me on the Radio Latino Inc. mobile app. This is Best in Business with Manny Lopez. 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 Good job, my man. No, no, Hmm? It wasn't no, but it cut off. All right, we do have we do have a question here from Daryl Santel. We okay. have a few questions in. Pop we actually have some celebrities guys. that are popping in, say, talking about how they're going to be getting their kids books today. I like it. So uh, a guy that we're uh, going to be competing with Netflix on. Tell one them, of the tell questions. Them the top three books I gave Caleb was Think and Grow Rich was number one. Success Principles was number one, but the one that I have him read repeatedly is Think and Grow Rich, The Power of Positive Thinking. And I started having him read John Maxwell books, you know, developing the leader within you. So I, and then I took him through like the top 20 sales books over the last probably year and a half. My number one mission besides teaching him to give to the poor and to fatherless kids and to widows is to 
train him to master sales and marketing because if he knows how to sell mm -hmm. then he will never hurt for money ever and that's where we all need to be living my friends great stuff man he is killing it all right so here's the question are you going to eventually transition in more into more than motivational like becoming a master of real estate this is uh, to caleb oh yeah for sure that's definitely my goal i'm an entrepreneur before i'm a speaker like that's why when people introduce me as the 50 year old speaker i'm like no i'm the 50 year old entrepreneur who does like speaking so i'm definitely into that like that's uh you know i own other businesses besides just that type of stuff so yeah for sure i definitely see myself i'm actually talking to a few people about like real estate and other stuff like that i definitely see that happening for sure good stuff all right so i will leave in more questions uh in the comments so you guys can get those answered we're gonna wrap it up here because we are hungry and i'm gonna take these guys to go eat love you guys thanks for jumping on adios amigos i believe we are all created for greatness not mediocrity that we are to live our lives accordingly striving to be agents of change as we attempt to leave this world a better place than we found it Ladies and gents, welcome to Best in Business with Manny Lopez, where passion becomes success. I'm your host, Mr. Too Blessed to be Stressed, broadcasting live on Radio Latino Inc.